Hi everyone. So firstly, thank you for all of the really nice comments about yesterday's video. Um, yeah, nice to see that you appreciate it and that you enjoyed it and that you want to make the food. So hope you have and uh, hope that you're doing really well and staying well. So I was just about to do tonight's dinner starting my preparations and I thought actually it's a really nice simple recipe to do uh, with stuff that you might actually already have in the house. So let's get into it, we're doing stuffed peppers tonight. The first thing I've done is cut up an onion, this is a, actually like a, a rosé onion, it's a pink, it's not red and it's not white, it's a pink onion. Um, so that's all finely chopped and then over here I've just pre-cooked some lentils. I don't always eat, and <laughs> eat lentils even though the last two recipes have been lentil based but stuff that you might have in your cupboard. So I've just pre-cooked them. All that's in there is a little bit of salt and that is it, just green lentils and a bit of salt. So first step, got some oil in a pan, just a little bit of um, vegetable oil and stick the onion in the pan, as simple as that. And you're just gonna soften it really slowly on a low heat until it becomes soft and translucent. You don't really wanna color it because it's gonna get extra cooking in the oven. So just keep it going. Can put a lid on it if you want to but keep an eye on it if you do that let it sweat let it go translucent okay so the next ingredient i've just added in is chestnut mushrooms they're completely optional if you don't like mushrooms don't put them in um, you can add courgettes if you like that aubergine is also really nice or just leave it as just the onion so now cook these until they're soft as well okay so now the mushrooms are all soft the onions are all soft and i'm just going to add in the lentils and stir them around and then to that we're just going to quickly add a little pinch of salt and a little bit of pepper and then I'll give them a stir and let them cook for a couple of minutes. The lentils are already pre-cooked but um, let them soak in the flavours of the mushrooms and the onions for a few minutes. The next thing you want to add is some tomato ketchup, just plain old tomato ketchup, any brand you like and you need quite a lot of this so I'm going for I never measure anything but I would say you probably want two or three tablespoons because um, this is going to make your sauce so something like that you can always add a little bit later nothing specific as long as it tastes the way you want it to taste and mix that all up and let it cook for another minute Okay, that's all looking delicious and saucy. So we're now gonna add in the other ingredients. This is what I've got. The wine is for me, it's not going in the, the recipe. <laughs> always cook with wine, guys, always cook with wine. Um, I've got some fresh tomatoes. Now normally I would add a little bit of tomato paste, to uh, tomato puree to counteract the sweetness of the ketchup. But I don't have any on stock right now and there was nothing in the shops the other day. <laughs> so we're gonna go with some fresh tomatoes. These are small um, romarches, I think they're called in Holland. Um, so I used about five of these, but you could just use two normal sized tomatoes. So I've chopped them up and that's going in. And then we are going to add some fresh chives, which I've got here all chopped up. I'm gonna add those in. And you can add whatever herbs you like to this. Fresh is always best, but right now, obviously it's hard to find those. So you could use uh, Provencal herbs, you could use Italian herbs. I love Greek herbs, um, and I think my mix of green herbs has got something like oregano, mint, dill, and bay leaf in it. So we're just gonna add some of that in there. I like it quite herby. If you don't, do less. If you don't want herbs, don't put them in. Entirely up to you. And as always, I love some spice so I'm adding some chili flakes this is absolutely completely optional if you don't like spice don't put it in and the final ingredient that I'm going to put in is this uh, miso paste which I absolutely love and it gives it such a nice umami flavor really savory um, salty and very satisfying it saves it's like adding stock but just gives it some kind of extra level of saltiness so I'm going to add that in, which I can't do while I'm holding the camera. So I'll add about, I'd say about half, uh, a heaped teaspoon to maybe two teaspoons of that. So the miso paste is now in and then to that we're going to just add a little bit of water. You don't want much because you don't want this to be too runny, but you do want the miso paste to break down a little bit. So just add a little bit of water, just eyeball it. If you think it needs more, add a bit more 
and if it goes too runny um, just let it bubble away for a little bit and it'll reduce so let's get all that cooking until everything is nicely combined okay as you can see this is thickened up really nicely I've not added anything else it's just been cooking for a few minutes and bubbling away and it's now nice and thick so the best thing to do with this now is to leave it for a few hours just turn it off and leave it and it'll soak up and it'll intensify its flavors if you can make this the day before and have it the day after even better but just give it as long as you can before you actually stuff the peppers so we'll come back in a minute and do that part so the next step i've got two peppers here and i've just sliced the tops off and de-seeded them and this is purely optional but it's what i find to be the best and makes a nicer final product is to blanch your peppers before you stuff them now that just means that what I've got here, I've got my peppers and I've got some water that's just coming to the boil. When it does come to the boil, I'm just going to put them in there for about four or five minutes. It depends on the size of your pepper. You don't want to fully cook them and you don't want them to be floppy, otherwise you can't stuff them. Um, so you just need to cook them just to take the crunch away and then they'll be ready to put your filling into. Okay, so the peppers have been blanching, so I did it for five minutes. It depends on the size of your peppers, but you can see they are now softer, but they're still holding their shape. They can still stand up, they're not flopping. So I've put them in the oven dish, and now we're gonna fill them with our delicious stuffing. So here's our um, mixture that's ready, and it's been cooling for a couple of hours, and the first thing we need to do is taste it. It's so important to taste your food before you <laughs> use it. And it's always better to taste it once it's cooled down because you'll taste the flavors better. If it's hot, you're not gonna taste whether it's salty enough or peppery enough or however you like it. So just gonna have a quick taste. And it's delicious. So we're now going to put this into the peppers. And again, I'm gonna make this difficult for myself and <laughs> try and do this one-handed while filming. But basically, you're gonna just put all of your mixture in there, pack it in, get as much mixture as you can, squish it down and get loads of that in there. You wanna get loads as much as you can. It doesn't matter if it overlaps on the top, that's just better, and if it falls around the outside, even better. So just stuff it in there. And if you do have any mixture left over, you can either eat it alongside um, your peppers, you know, use it as extra, or if there's really loads, if you've made really a lot, um, use it in a pasta dish for lunch or something and you can or mix it with some rice but you can you know you can use it in anything and it's really it's such a nice mixture mixing it through some pasta would be amazing or chucking it over a jacket potato would also also be a really great idea so that's the mixture in the peppers there's a little bit left I am not gonna keep it I am gonna put these in the oven and I will use that alongside, as you'll see later when I plate it up. So I've set the oven for 200 degrees C and you're gonna pop those in the oven. First of all, obviously you are going to put the lids on and make it look fancy. I guess they should have their own little way of going on. There we go. And the other one like that. So they are all ready and looking beautiful. And we're gonna pop those in the oven at 200 for about 20 minutes. Keep an eye on them. You want them, well, I want them, <laughs> to go a little bit, almost like not burning, but they wanna have a little bit of color on them because that's gonna give them so much more flavor. So I would say about 20 minutes, check it. If you think it needs a bit longer, give it a bit longer. It depends how much you've cooked them first. It depends how big your peppers are. So I would say about 20 to 25 minutes. So that's what we're gonna do now. And in the meantime, cook yourself some rice to go alongside. Okay, so I've just taken these out of the oven. They had exactly 20 minutes at 200 and they look exactly how I want them. Amazing, they've got this lovely like crispy bit on the top. Exactly perfect, I just wanna dive into these. So just finishing with my rice cooking and then we'll plate it up and I'll show you the final result. And here it is all plated up, lovely pepper with some of the extra lentils on the side on top of a bed of rice and topped with chives. So that was the stuffed pepper recipe for tonight. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, all I recommend is a glass of red wine alongside and 
clearly we know that I'm going to eat both of those peppers. Um, you could keep one for lunch, you could keep it for dinner, but it's so delicious. Probably going to eat them both. So enjoy your evening, everybody. Enjoy your Saturday. Have fun. Be around the people you love and drink some nice wine. Enjoy your dinner and stay well. See you next time.